Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott. Perhaps like me, you can remember when projectors were these massive devices that you carried around in something like a suitcase and it would often cost upwards of $5,000. Fortunately, things have come a long way since then. And when I started to see the new generations of kind of micro type projectors, the thought that I had was what a great device to potentially use as a photographer. And uh, particularly for the, the settings when you have maybe shot a an event or shot a wedding and rather than trying to show people photos off the back of your you know your camera or even on a laptop to be able to project that on a larger scale where maybe a crowd can gather around and take a look it's an opportunity to make some pretty serious sales right on the spot so one of those uh, type projectors that really caught my attention was this new little guy from BenQ this is a really, really flexible little projector that does everything from being a Bluetooth speaker. It's built right into it. It has an Android, I believe, Snapdragon type platform. So you could also go into the menu itself and there you have an option of installing any number of different apps and uh, including some of the very popular apps for entertainment and uh, you can display them right from them. It's the, kind of the advantage of having a wireless, you know, the, the wireless world that we live in gives you opportunity to um, kind of stream things right from this even if you have no other device attached. On top of that, however, you do have the opportunity to use something like, you know, Apple AirPlay and so that you can send content to it. And the same is true off of Android. There are limitations and that is as is the case with many such uh, devices that if you're kind of trying to stream from certain pl uh, platforms where the content is protected that's not YouTube but you know something like Netflix or something like that there's a good chance that it won't play during that way however you do have the op opportunity to use something like Chromecast and you can display that content there and so um, you know you have a lot of options on how to get content to the the platform itself which is really great it also utilizes a you know usb c type connection which gives you all kinds of flexibility on how you can go about making things work and so going back to just the display port here for a second and so you can see the uh the photos that are being displayed so our native um frame rate that's being displayed here is as 1280 by 720. as far as the overall power of the display you know, it's not, it's not the kind of projector that's going to, you know, blow away any other kind of light source. And so it has a lumen rating of around 200 lumens. And so that means that in a condition like this, where I've got, you know, lighting on my set, you can see that it's not particularly bright. If I were to turn that light off for a second, you can see that it gets a whole lot brighter. And, and so you can see the, uh, the content there. However, it is bright enough that if you're in a, you know, a reasonably lit room, you could definitely throw it onto just a wall as I've done here, just a standard wall and display it. The other thing that I like about this, uh, you know, for that kind of perspective is the fact that on the bottom, it's got a typical, um, like I think it's quarter inch mount, but it's the same mount that, for example, I just put a, a quick release plate here so you can throw it on the top of a tripod. You could screw it onto the top of a light stand. And so you have a lot of uh, flexibility on how to get it to a height you want. The other thing that is pretty cool, however, is that it has a tilt type effect and so that you can actually um, tilt it a fair degrees, bringing it either up or down. And the other cool thing is that it automatically detects for keystoning. And so it will actually adjust for that automatically. And so it's, there's, just, there's not a lot of guesswork to it. And so as far as all of those things go, it's a surprisingly flexible little platform. Now, as far as some of the negatives I would point to from a the perspective at least of getting it set up is that uh, it's kind of installing some of the apps. Um, once they're installed, they actually work fairly well. I did find it a little bit clunky sometimes in the install process, um, even the process of inputting information, like if it's a, something to where there is a, a password, you know, a email address and password involved, an actual account. It was a little bit clunky to punk, punch that in through the remote. Fortunately, there is a, a smart control app that is there as well. And, um, and so I recommend using the smart control app for input 
template because it gives you the option of uh, not just, you know, kind of scrolling around. For one thing, you can switch into a mode to where you have almost like a cursor so you can move around to select things. But your other advantage there is that you can actually type in information on your smartphone or your tablet. And, and obviously that's going to be a much easier way of inputting that kind of information. So as I already noted, you have the option of using the actual um, remote that comes with it. You have the option of using an app to control. There are also some controls here along the top of it. Now, in terms of what comes with it, obviously it does come with a remote. Um, it does come with a few connection cables. And so it has that USB-C uh, connection port. And so it gives you both a USB to USB-C um, uh, mail to mail connector. It also gives you an adapter from the USB-C to a standard female input for full size HDMI. And so that gives you flexibility of connecting a lot of HDMI devices. Um, I actually have connected right now to display uh, photos here. I just have that mini laptop that I reviewed a few months back. And so it's, you know, these two things together are really, really convenient in terms of size. It also has a neoprene uh, kind of mesh type case uh, that you can put everything in. It does have a power adapter. Now, the good news is, is that you can run it off of battery power. And so the, um, the battery will, it takes roughly three hours to charge and it will run for about three hours. Now, your time is going to differ uh, depending on whether or not you actually are using the Bluetooth speaker portion of it as well. Now, as you might have noted that when I unplugged it, it switched into the battery mode. So the battery mode does not give you the full power output. And so uh, I would say in battery mode, you need to be in kind of more dim type conditions. So it could be kind of fun, you know, maybe if you're looking at it from entertainment side, you know, maybe if you're on a camping trip, you know, to display something and, and to watch something in that way, you know, that could be fun, but it's not gonna work in any kind of brightly lit room type whatever. It's definitely more viable when it's running off of the power source. One other minor complaint is that the power cable is, uh, is a little bit short. And so I find that I'm often having to use it with an, uh, with, uh, an extension cord to get it to the, the distance that I want. You know, maybe a minor thing, but certainly an observation that I've had. And so it's actually quite a fun little device. And the one thing that I noted that's kind of important for me in using it in the way that I describe as a photographer is that the actual overall size of it, it's of a size to where it can fit into a standard slot in most camera bags. And so if it's something that you're wanting to bring along as a way of, you know, potentially displaying some of your work and getting some additional sales, then um, it's convenient to bring along in that way. In terms of the overall cost, it runs 379 US dollars. And so it's not cheap, nor is it prohibitively expensive. Uh, can, you kind of have to make a determination whether something like that is a novelty for you or actually going to be useful. However, if it's something that's useful and it gets you some additional sales when you've shot portraits or an event, it wouldn't take long for it to pay for itself and uh, increased exposure and increased sales because you could always just, um, you, could, you could connect right to your, your camera, for example, and, and start to display photos onto it. And, you know, that could be a very, very, very um, useful way of attracting attention, getting some additional sales. So if you're interested in, interested in, you know, maybe exploring a little bit more about it, getting some questions answered, I'll throw a link in the description down below to where you can go and look at the BenQ website and get more information about some of the nitty gritty of the details. Also, there is going to be buying links there if you'd like to purchase one for yourself. And of course, the typical linkage to follow me on social media, uh, to become a patron, to sign up for my newsletter. And if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button, right? here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.